Oh my gosh, it's over. This season 25, this amazing season is over. So this is my final blog post, my final video for the season until we get back in February and I can't wait. I've got my buff from my favorite season on, Fans vs. Favorites in Micronesia, and we've got another Fans vs. Favorites coming and I hear it's going to be amazing. So that'll at least help the withdrawal from the end of an amazing season. But let's get down to the episode. So we had to wait a little while before watching it because of the football game and then 60 Minutes was on and then the presidential address happened, which of course is very important, but for all the hardcore Survivor fans, I know that it was difficult for us to wait those extra 30 minutes. <laughs> but finally, the episode started. And uh, I have to say that I've been listening to some podcasts today to prep myself for tonight. And I listened to Rob Sister Nino's podcast with Parvati. And they had an interesting prediction that the reason why we were entering this final episode with a final four as opposed to a final five as we usually do is because there may be a tie in the final vote which would need them to have the extra time. But that didn't happen, so I guess I was like, I kept expecting that, and because of the change in time, because of the delay, I was kind of thrown off as to how much time was left in the episode. So that definitely affected my reaction at the end when like the winner was just like kind of a clean sweep for Denise. Um, but it was, it was an interesting episode, so let's talk about Malcolm's loss. It was really heartbreaking, seeing his hands shake. I, I think it was very psychological. I know he said that you know, his hands were shaky in general, but I, I definitely think that um, winning and having that extra chance threw him off, like, psychologically, and, like, he wasn't as in it from the beginning, and I think for that kind of challenge, you just need to be in it. And I guess if you add his shaky hands to that, he really didn't stand a chance. And it was heartbreaking, like, I knew he was going to go home, there was no chance, um, really, un unless he was playing with bad players, but he, he wasn't, so, um, and he also, he made the, a big mistake by uh, not telling Denise that he would stick with her and then do at least a tie vote or something like that. And I think that his reason behind that was that he was really confident that he would either win or that somehow Malcolm and Lisa, I mean, Scoopin and Lisa would take him to the end and that meant that he didn't want to lie straight to Denise's face um, and then have to vote her off and then potentially lose her vote in the jury because obviously jury votes are very important at this part in the game, at this point in the game. So that's my only explanation for why he didn't commit to um, aligning with Denise because Denise did what any good player would do after getting a wishy-washy answer and that was talking to everyone else in the game and uh, that was a great solution for Malcolm, for Scoopin, and gosh I keep calling him Malcolm, for Scoopin and, um, and Lisa. So good play for Denise and ultimately winning play for Denise. Um, let's talk about the final tribal. I thought the opening statements were solid, although I was kind of surprised at Denise's abrasiveness. I don't think she came out as a bitch, as Penner um, called her pretty much, but she was a bit too abrasive for my liking, although clearly that didn't impact the final decision. Um, I was impressed with Lisa and Scoopin, I guess, did a good one, but in, in retrospect I can't really remember it now, so I guess it wasn't that good. Um, I was also really surprised by the jury. I, I thought they would be more poised or like less bitter at least, but Artis was bitter. Malcolm, I, I get why Malcolm was really disappointed, but he was kind of like mean to Denise and uh, pretty mean like overall. So, um, well, I guess not to Lisa because he told her that he might eventually vote for her, <laughs> but, but still he was pretty harsh and I get that he was very disappointed, but it was really like his own fault. Like he he knew he had to win and he didn't so um, I was kind of surprised at that but ultimately oh and Penner obviously I mean he had a very compelling speech but he really like I mean I don't think it was necessary for him to um, blow Lisa's cover th at that point in the game I, I think that was really mean actually and I mean not just mean it was just unnecessary and and hurtful um, but he did, and I think Lisa actually made a really good comeback by saying, well, why would you talk about your, you know, what you did when you were in high school? Um, obviously it's a different situation, I'm sure what he did in high school was much less interesting than what she did, but I don't think that that really should impact her win, and, and, uh, I was kind of harsh, but, but still, 
Love Penner, still intact. Um, so Denise is the winner, and I am excited. I, I wanted either her or Malcolm to win. Um, I think I'm still really disappointed that Malcolm didn't win and didn't make it to the end, so that kind of like diminishes my excitement for Denise, but I am very happy. It's, it's, it was well-deserved, um, and I guess I was also like a little bit disappointed because I was expecting a tie or like some other thing to happen, and it didn't. So it was like, oh, oh, Denise won. Oh, wow, okay. Um, but yes, Denise, good job. Really happy. It's kind of surprising a Matt Singh person won despite it being a majority Tendang jury. Uh, but clearly Tendang did have rifts in their tribe and that's why they didn't, you know, eliminate everyone else after the merge and that's why a Tendang person didn't win. Like there were fundamental rifts within there that honestly were Tendang's undoing. As for the reunion show, no surprise or see still bitter. <laughs> that last comment was, you know, clear indication of that. Um, I think in terms of returning players, I agree with Rob Sesternino's prediction that Malcolm is a sure thing to return. I'm very confident about that. Um, and maybe more than once, he's honestly amazing. Um, I think Abby will return. In terms of villains between RC and Abby, I, I thought Abby was way more interesting. I would love to see Abby return. I think her game would actually be really different, which is kind of why I would like to see her return. And uh, I, I know Rob said that you thought RC might be a sleeper comeback, but I really hope she doesn't. Like, I, I just really hope she doesn't. They should not bring anyone that cannot, like, make, that meshes real life with the game, like, so long after the game. Um, so I, I wouldn't do that. And then, oh my god, Dawson, who the hell do you think you are? Why would you do that? I can't even believe, like, why did Jeff even address her? But then again, why would he have any reason to expect that she would jump him like that? I mean, I, I cannot, like, literally, literally jaw to the floor when that happened. I couldn't believe it. And it's so disrespectful. Russell Hamp said it on Twitter. And, I mean, his Jeff Bros wife was in the audience. It's just not done. Honestly, Dawson, you just screwed up all your chances of being on reality TV again. No one wants that one, anyone that crazy. And you're definitely not going to be on anything Mark Burnett produces, which is pretty much half or more of reality television. Um, so I hope you enjoyed that. <laughs> Those were your, the last of your 15 minutes of fame, girl. So yeah. Anyway, really excited for, for the next season. I'm um, off on vacation next week, so I'll be catching up on some older seasons of Survivor, rewatching some, getting myself pumped up, um, and yep, can't wait for next season. Bye for now!